My name is Asia Samson, and today on Baptism Overland, we are installing the Old Man Emu coil spring. Wait, didn't we do this install already? Yep. Then what the hell is this? Higher rate springs, bro. What do we need this for? Because uh, we're sagging like baggy jeans in the 90s. Wait, why aren't you manning the camera? You're fine, man. Camera's recording. I don't need to be behind it. Plus, no one's going to watch this anyway. <laughs> Dude, Dude, we should do TikToks. Uh, no, we are way too old to be doing TikToks. <laughs> Wait, are you wearing a silk robe? Yeah, because I don't give a f All right, today we are talking about spring rates. All right, if you're so smart, why don't you tell them what spring rate means? Spring rate is the amount of weight it would take to compress a spring by an inch. That's right. In its simplest form, a spring rate is basically the amount of weight it would take to compress a spring by one inch. I literally just said that, dude. Now, there are a lot of physics and equations involved with this, which I'm not going to get into because I personally don't even know them myself. But if you think of springs, all springs have tension. And they basically work one of two ways. Springs will either compress or expand. Certain springs, you'll know that if you pull them apart and you let go, they will snap back together. Other springs, if you push them together and you let go, then it expands back out quickly. And that's basically the kind of spring that's in automotive applications, the kind that expands. And along with your shock absorbers, they work together to keep your tires on the ground, up and down based on the terrain of the road, while keeping the cabin pretty much stable so you're not moving with the road. I mean, I know that's how it feels like on a Jeep sometimes. But they work together to keep the tires on the ground and keep you level. Okay, so what are these? Well, about eight or nine months ago, I installed the Old Man Emu Heavy Duty Constant Load 2-inch Lift Kit. That lift kit was meant for heavy duty use so that when I start to add weight to the vehicle, it will hold that weight. And it was great. I mean, it's, it is great. It still is great. Everything that I've put on the vehicle, it has allowed it to maintain its height. Because if you were to try to just get regular springs and then you started adding a whole bunch of stuff like steel bumpers, side steps, roof rack, rooftop tent, all that stuff, your vehicle is going to sag back down. Now, some people will say, well, then why don't you just get longer springs, like a three inch lift or a four inch lift. But there are videos out there right now that say you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't just go with a longer or higher lift just so that you can get that height back because you're adding a lot of tension on those springs that are not meant to carry such heavy weight. Which is why when you know you're going to start to add stuff to your vehicle, you don't just need to look at how much height you want. You need to look at the spring rate of those springs. Now, originally, I bought the Old Man Emu Heavy Duty Constant Load Springs. That was great, and it has been great, especially since I had the Garvin roof rack on there, which was completely heavy. Then I removed the Garvin Expedition roof rack, put in the front runner roof rack, which is much lighter, and my vehicle went back up again because obviously it doesn't have the weight of the Garvin anymore. So that was fine. But then, once I put the rooftop tent on, which is about 160 pounds, my back sagged down even more. And it was like being back in stock height. And that's not very good. I mean, I'm not getting rubbing because I'm getting, I have 33 inch tires on mine, so I wasn't getting any rubbing. But it no longer had the height, and now my Jeep was sort of sitting cockeyed, right? Like the front was just higher than the back and you could tell it was sagging. Then when I put the rest of my gear for overlanding and camping in the back, it sagged even more. Now to solve that problem, I was thinking about just getting spacers for the back to kind of level out my ride height again, but that's not really going to help because the springs that I had back there, although they are heavy duty, they only go up to a certain amount and it was not going to help in the weight that I had put on. See, the thing is, we never really know what we're going to do with our vehicles until we get there. Like, how would I know how much weight I'm going to put on this thing if I hadn't planned it out way ahead of time? Like, I didn't even think I was going to get a rooftop tent. I thought I was just going to get a trailer. And here we are with a rooftop tent, and now I'm sagging again. So, to combat that, instead of using spacers, I just decided to upgrade the rear springs to the Old Man Emu Heavier Duty springs which i will get into the kind of products they offer now i don't need to upgrade the front because when i first put the old man emu heavy duty springs on the front it was riding really high and then from there i added a arb steel bumper along with a winch 
and that brought the weight of the front down by about an inch and now it's perfect. There's no other heavy weight that I'm going to be putting on the front so it's sitting where it needs to sit right now with the Old Man Emu heavy duty springs that my kit came with. For the rear, however, that's what we need to address. All right, so let's talk about just the rear springs because that's what we're addressing today. Now, when it comes to Old Man Emu products for the Jeep JK, there are four kinds of rear springs that they offer, and I'll give them to you in part numbers. The original one that if you were just needing a lift and you're not adding anything really heavy to your vehicle, you would be getting part number 2616. And that spring has a spring rate of 0 to 90 pounds. So that means you can add some stuff on there and you won't lose your height of 2 inches. The second one they have is part number 2619. That's considered a heavy load spring and that carries 90 to 180 pounds. So if you're going to add some bumpers, things like that, still not too heavy, then you would want to go with the 2619 heavy load uh, spring from them. Now the one that came with my kit when I originally bought the heavy duty springs was part number 2618. Kind of weird that the numbers kind of like shouldn't it be like the other way around. 2618 carries up to 300 pounds of constant load and that gives you about a 2.25 inch lift. And then finally you have the 2620. That's the heaviest that they have. That's the one that I got and that can carry up to 660 pounds. Also giving you a 2.25 inch lift. Now that is pretty overkill. I am not planning on carrying 660 pounds but I mean it's getting pretty close to that. I mean you're considering my rooftop tent is about 160 pounds. My roof rack is about 67 pounds. And then I put the Titan fuel tank on there, which is when it's full, it's 100 pounds. And then you got all my cargo for another 100 pounds. And then if I decide to get a, you know, a rear bumper, a steel rear bumper, then that's going to be another 100 or so pounds as well. So going up to the 2620 is what makes the most sense. So that's what we're doing today. We're, all we're doing is keeping the lift as is. We're just swapping out those rear springs with these heavier, heavier duty springs from Old Man Emu. And it should be a pretty simple and quick job. I shouldn't say that because then if I say that, then things start going awry. And then it'll take like nine hours. Let me not jinx myself. Let's go install this thing. So we're out here at Chris's house. Got a chance to check out what he just built. Looks really good, man. I mean, he has a whole electrical system set up over here, which is pretty cool. Um, I like that a lot. That's that's cool. Like all your switches are there. And I actually got, got this it. one because of this. Even though these look really weird, I didn't know what they were. They're little miniature circuit breakers. That's pretty cool. And then really yes, overkill. three drawers. So you have two of the big ones here, and then a smaller one at the top for little small items, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. And then the fridge slides out. And you did a good job, man. I am no Bob Vila. <laughs> uh, yeah, that for sure. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. It's a work in progress, man. Come on. But hey, man, we're all about DIY around here. So Yes. All right, so before we do the lift, let's get some measurements. When we first installed this lift, it was 41 inches. After putting all the weight that we had on it, I am now at 37 and a quarter. So that's a pretty sizable droop, and I'm hoping that these springs will lift it back up. I'm hoping to get back to maybe not 41 like before, but maybe 39s, high 38s. I'd be happy with that because right now the front is 39 inches. Um, the front started off at 40. It drooped about an inch after I put on the ARB front bumper and that drooped it down about an inch. So at the front, we're at 39 inches, which I'm happy with because there's no other weight that's gonna go on there anymore. So that's good at 39. This has drooped down to 37 and a quarter. I'd like to get it back to at least 38, high 38s, low 39s, and get my height back. So, let's go do it. I've become a pro at this because we've been doing it so much. Not a it, pro, but... It gets faster each time. Yeah. <laughs> the first time I ever did my hub bearings on the front, it took me like 10 hours by myself, and they went bad right away because I this is on an older Jeep. And the second time I went and bought new hubs again, except not knockoffs, but real ones. And I was done with both front hub bearings on the on the front of the Jeep in like two hours. Yep. By myself, because I knew what I was doing the second time. 
Now, what we're not going to do this time, though, is say that this install is going to be easy. Then don't say it! No, what I'm saying is, what we're going to do is pray that it's easy. That we don't have any That issues. we don't have any issues. As with any Jeep lift, the first thing you want to do is jack up the vehicle by the axle. Then go ahead and place jack stands underneath the chassis to hold that up separately from the axle. Then go ahead and remove both tires in the rear. Once the tires are removed, go ahead and disconnect the sway bars on both sides. And then disconnect all brake lines on both sides as well so that they're not pulling when you drop the axle. Just for the record, it looks like he's the one that's doing all the work. I'm doing work. It's just that I'm not recording myself when I'm doing that part. I am! <laughs> Next thing you want to do is remove the bottom shock mount bolts on both sides and that should free up the axle completely so you can droop it. With the axle droop, the springs should just pop out real easily. How are these wider? Are you sure you bought the back springs? That's what I'm saying. I did. It's the rears. What's the box say? 2620. So we are going to go look online just to be safe. This is the 2618 um, heavy duty or heavy constant load spring. And this is a 2620, which is a higher spring rate. What is worrying me is why is it skinnier than that one? And that could just be what it is. That's how it is. But we just want to make sure because it, it is the right part. Um, I just want to make sure that you know, we didn't accidentally get front springs instead. But looking at the box, it says 2620, and that is the rear for ARB. So just in case you're doing the same thing, we're about to find out for you if these are, in fact, the correct springs for the rear. I'm just wondering why it's thinner. Now, Chris said that on his TerraFlex Outback Springs, they're pretty thin as well. Um, that's This is his vehicle here. Um, not sure if you can see it, but his springs... He said are pretty thin in the back also. So we just want to make sure that this is the correct thing. To install the new springs, we're just going to go in reverse order of how we took the old ones out. Don't forget to put your spring isolators on, slip it into place, and then drop the bottom into the perch. Go ahead and jack the vehicle back up, just enough so that you can slip the shock mount bolts back into place. Now go ahead and connect your brake lines back up, as well as your sway bar links. Put the tires back on. With the tires back in place, go ahead and remove your jack stands and then lower the vehicle and you're done. All right, let's see what we got. We are now at 39 and a half. Didn't I tell you? 39 and a half. So that is it, you guys. I'm so glad that we got the lift back where it needs to be. We are back to 39 and a half and everything looks even again and that is considering that I have the rooftop tent and now this trunk is back to being high because I remember it was it was low guys it was like down here and now we have it back high again that was pretty quick much quicker than before and we didn't jinx ourselves and we didn't jinx ourselves that's right <laughs> looks so good Whew. all right Whoever thinks it's a good idea to do an install in the middle of the day during a Florida summer must be a glutton for punishment because that was brutal. But you know what? I don't even care because I got my lift back. I am now back sitting at the height that I was when I first installed the lift. I believe I'm at 39 and a half in the rear and about 39.75 to 40 inches in the front. We are now perfectly level and that is considering all the weight that's on this vehicle right now is pretty much staying there such as the roof rack, rooftop tent, the 33 inch spare tire in the back along with the Titan fuel tank. Now I do know that if I do end up getting a steel rear bumper 
or if I add fuel to the Titan fuel tank, or if I load up the Jeep with cargo, I am going to sag some more. But at least now I know that without the cargo and without the extra fuel, for my daily driving, I am sitting nice and pretty and I couldn't be any happier. I think this install was totally worth it because now I have the springs that can handle any kind of weight that I put on there. I mean, I hope so because these are the highest rated springs that OME has. And so <laughs> I can't exceed 660 pounds, which I really don't ever plan to. Like, I don't, what am I gonna do? Put an elephant on the top of my cargo rack? Like, yeah, that's not gonna happen. But what I am saying is that I am glad that I now have the capability to add the weight such as a steel bumper or whatever else and know that I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to add any spacers to this thing. I don't have to get airbags. Uh, I don't have to do any of that stuff. I'm pretty good where I'm at. Tell them about the Boeing. I mean, I wasn't gonna bring it up. So you're not gonna tell them about the issue we have. I, I, I just don't see the point. All right, do what you want, but I don't think you're being honest. So you want me to talk about it? I'm just saying if I watched your videos, which I don't, I would want to be told the ins and outs of something and not just the good parts to hype up the video. You aren't being true to yourself or your audience, but you know you do you, buddy. All right, I got it, I got it. So we do have an issue. I'm getting Boeing. What I mean by that is basically the springs, the way it's sitting right now, is kind of bowed a little bit. Now I looked it up online, uh, realized that it's pretty common for springs in the rear to bow out on Jeep JKs when they get a lift. Good thing about mine, it's not extreme. Like it's just slight, but I think the reason why is because the differential kind of droops forward just a tiny bit. And so it moves the perch a little bit forward and thus I'm getting this kind of bowing effect because where the spring is sitting at the bottom versus where it rests at the top, it's not straight. It's not aligned. So it's kind of bowing a tiny bit. Again, it's not extreme. I didn't get a high lift, like a super high lift, which I've noticed with some people's online, they're getting four or five inch lifts. And so that bowing is, you can like really see it. And I think the cause of this is because these springs are a lot thinner than the ones that I had on there before. The old many move springs that I had before I upgraded were a little bit wider at the base. And so it could have been bowing and I just didn't notice it because it was pretty wide at the bottom. These ones are thinner and has a lot more coils. So you can really see the bow. I did contact ARB to see what kind of solutions they have. I also looked up some stuff online. I know they have like steel wedges that you can put to kind of straighten everything back out. So I'm throwing that question back to you. Have you ever seen any Boeing in your rear installs? If you have, let me know what you've done to correct it. And if you know any good products that you could recommend to me, go ahead and shoot it over in the comments and I will take a look and do my research as well. And maybe we'll do an install on those. So if you've had any Boeing issues, I would love, love to hear about it. And let me know if it's a dangerous thing to have it. I mean, a lot of people are telling me that it's fine. It's not that big of a deal considering that mine's not super extreme. But I'm also kind of weirded out by having it bow like that. It kind of scares me a little bit and I could just be tripping for no reason. So let me know your thoughts. But in the meantime, if you did find this video helpful, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and Consider also supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to make content like this. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson. And I'm him too, I guess. And we will see you next time.